see some new faces. I've been here for seven years, but I don't know a lot of people here. So, the, the quick introduction I'm Don Lefer, a research fellow in Central Mid, the Way Unit. So, I'm leading the, the Link Stream infrastructure team. So, we will summarize uh, what we achieved in the last three or four years in terms of processing link data uh, for dynamic data. So, this is the first time I used this template. So, it seems the black color doesn't work quite well with the background. But it should be fine. So, uh, so we build the infrastructure for processing dynamic data, is like stream data, sensor data, picture data, something like that. So, the whole stack that supporting people building application, conducting research via this platform. So, the idea for building this platform is to integrate the web data that you can expose as uh, link data and link data cloud with other physical data that you can see from sensor, from uh, maybe, um, other Twitter data as well, but come in the form of the stream data. So the problem that we're trying to solve in here is the barrier that uh, um, keep people away from integrating these two types of data together. So we want to leave up this barrier by introducing the link data stream model. So how does the stream data look like? So we used the same concept of the model from RDF data to, to introduce stream data. You can see in here that it's about the link from stream data. It's, you see, you have different NAS, NAS of data over the time. We're trying to build the link from dynamic data to what we call the static data, more normally it's metadata. What they you normally see in here is something like, if you see the Dublin airport normally has lots of static data, like you can link to Wikipedia, link to the link geo data, something like that. That the part that you can link to link uh, open data flow. This is the different stream data out item. The idea is if you create enough link to here, you can you will be able to follow the link to find relevant data in both world, physical world and virtual world from the, the web. So from that idea, we're building, this is the software stack to support that idea. So if you see that there's different component, it's not really new infrastructure. Um, uh, in architecture, you can see it is similar to uh, software stack in link data, you normally had the wrapper to draft the data in different format, link it into link data, try to link with other data set. In here you have it here stream data that link to link data cloud. In the application wow. layer you have Sparkle and Phone, Master Composer and Data Explorer and the things. Uh, in terms of deployment we target into a massive amount of data, so to avoid we see the data have been processed in a cluster with a lot of computer. You have the, the bus, the data bus in, inside the in enterprise to, to enable the, the flow of data running back and forth from the web server to uh, RDF apps or our stream processing engine. The thing in here, the only thing new in here is stream processing engine we call SQL that we try to glue up with triple storage that give you the link data query processor like Sparkle query processing. And here, you try to connect with the storage, maybe in-memory storage, external storage, or Sparkle endpoint. Work with uh, Sparkle query processor to, to process the data. So the requirement for this engine is how to deal with um, high update rate from the stream data. It's so normally people store it, you never think about million update per second, something like that. That's the target that we want to achieve. 
Uh, another thing is um, performance. Performance and scalability in here. So you only not only scale <coughs> by the size of data, you scale by uh, the speed of data, number of the query on, on the system as well. So to build up the the core part of the system, in the nut cell you will see, okay, you have a static data set here, the stream data here you have to convert it into RDF, and you put the stream processing engine, you will have the declare property query to query the data. But the qu query had to be like similar to Sparkle. To, yeah, and at the first uh, idea of this, is try to adopt people who have experience in semantic web to, to go to the community to, get, to use this system. So you also have the different step of the query processing, like pre-processing, optimization, and execution to get the answers. But the, the core part in here is the query is c continuous. It's different from Sparkle query. You, you, you post the query to get the result. It's different query model in here, you raise the query, it will be persist there. And when the data coming to the system, when you have a new data, the system will boost the data to you. So it's different from the traditional way of query link data cloud. So to build the system like that, we come up with uh, the execution framework called SQL. So in here, because I don't have time to present the whole this architecture and processing block, just to summarize some 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 idea of uh, why we build this architecture. It, this architecture is allow us to have very small memory footprint to help us to load as much data into the memory memory as possible because we have a lot of data not coming from stream, but a lot of data from linked data cloud, like billion triples, and things like that. So we have an encoder that encodes data in really uh, tiny data structure that cover to reduce data uh, considerably. Uh, we have like something we call dynamic optimization that can work with the stream data because the data change all, all over the time. You know the query first, but you don't know how the data look like up front. Uh, other thing is, we see that we can do some a lot of pre-computation and index intermediate result that come from static data, like from RDF store, uh, and it will have improved the performance. Um, if you're interested in this part, uh, we have other presentation and paper about that, but I, I wouldn't go to detail about that. Uh, another thing is, we have. The, another part to have a full control of data structure and processing state that allow it to do a lot of things with engine and even scale the system into the cloud. So people will say what's new with the system is in comparison with what is in the state of the art. We had four points. We had a no uh, adaptive processing no module. Uh, we have a new execution framework, and we have a lot of data structure and algorithm to, for evaluating the query operator. And we have novel algorithm for optimization as well. I just summarized it's some new part of our system. A lot of technical detail you can find in my thesis and other work of the group. Uh, so from this, uh, we build the engine that quite efficiently, right? and we can show the, the, the performance result later. But overall, is the idea of building query processing is to help you to post the processing demand on the declarative way. So we use the query language similar to Sparkle. So the query we propose is not really uh, different from what we know. So uh, you see in here, you see really f familiar query pattern in here, like Sparkle, you see a lot of pattern in here. What we introduce f f in the query is some new fragment uh, query pattern that look similar to 
other patterns like you see if you had a graph, UI, and then triple patterns. In the query, you introduce only two, uh, some keywords that help you to include the stream into the processing. So, it's really minimal extension from Sparkle 101, but will enable you to, in, to put the stream data in the pictures of processing uh, link data. So, to show you some, 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 some performance figure that we have uh, on so far. So we conduct an experiment for, for 10, uh, 12 queries or all the query patterns for the, um, similar to Sparkle and uh, we apply for stream scenario. We simulate uh, the scenario from stream social network data and we have different performance tests by like throughput, how it's scaled by its size of the, uh, the static data, how much data you can put in the street, uh, the window size, and the number of concurrent queries. So, uh, let me like tell you a, a bit more about the, the scenario we try to evaluate. So we we assume that you, you have the scenario that integrates social network with physical data like GPS. So you have different data sources like Twitter, Facebook, or some forums that people post data over the time. You want to aggregate, aggregate all this data, you need the system that help you to correlate with the stream data by using some window to extract the data you need, and then put all the system. If you need a massive update to the system, like 100 uh, update per second or something like that. Uh, 100,000. <laughs> So in here you highlight the post in all Twitter post, Facebook post or something. You have GPS location of the user. People post photo with the location as well. Assume you have static data in here, user profile with other relevant information. Maybe you can link with OpenStreetMap data, Wikipedia, and whatever you want. And you need some other processing on that. So. We post trial query that most people use to analyze the data. So the performance that we gained so far, like 10,000 times faster to some similar system. This is one of the most uh, quite most well-known system in stream processing for link data. Another one uh, is GTALIS, is our uh, event processing. So we gain like one. Um, uh, around 1,000 times faster to other system. Uh, you see in here the performance, like you can do uh, 100,000 update. It's some more complicated, around 10,000 10, update. Uh, how is scale? So we try with around 1 million triple data set that more other system fail, and our system still can scale very sta stable in that side. Another thing is, uh, that affect the form of like, okay, I can process the windows on, on, uh, on, uh, I want to look back how much data in, in, in history. So that's, that allowed the system to, to, to maintain uh, longer history of data in memory to allow faster lookup or something. So now we test like, okay, let's, scale data from around 10 or 100 triple in the, the windows until 10 million uh, triple in the window. Assume that you have like long table millions of items like that. And you try to copy like John doing a creation uh, at real time, how fast you can go. So our system like when you increase the data, it decreases the, the, the performance the whole system. but it's really stable because it, like when you increase the window size, our data structure doesn't like um, affect us because you, we it's really efficient to maintain the data structures. Other system fell set to around ten thousand or one hundred thousand items per second. Our system still send scale into million triple window size. Uh, another thing is. Okay, most of the scenario you use for, for stream data that people post like 1,000 or 10,000, assume that in some scenario, 
that you have 100,000 sensors like we have. People around the world want to post the query like, what's the weather today? Or uh, is there anything happen in my hometown? Or something like that. So we try to have like, to scale the number of the query running concurrently in the system. So most of this current system, they fail around 100 query at the same time. Our system we can, can scale up to 1,000 at the moment, where the system like have four core, four gigabyte or eight gigabyte RAMs. So it depends up to the, the hardware that you can process that. So in summary, the performance figures that we achieved with this uh, SQL engine is running a stock standalone computer is okay to faster other system, but we have some limitation like okay we can handle 100,000 triple per second with a simple query, but if you get the query more 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 com 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 complicated, is the, the number of update will be slower, much slower, like 1,000 and 10,000. Uh, so this and other figure about scalability when we increase like data size and uh, number of item you maintain in the window to do local processing, other processing like aggregations and, and processing. So we see the limitation because we have the upper limit of the hardware that we process in that line. Uh, with standalone computers, you have limited I/O from the, the second uh, storage storage, limited amount of memory, and also CPU speed. Because when we measure our performance, the system it always go 80 percent, 100 percent CPU usage, and also number of cores, whatever, uh, for processing. So the disadvantage for processing stream data in a single computer is you have an upper limitation of hardware configuration. Other thing is even sometimes, okay, now you can buy a okay, uh, 32 core which station you can have uh, 100 megabyte, uh, gigabyte RAM or something like that. But the total core ownership for single system is higher than uh, assemble the network system to achieve that uh, processing. Uh, call like for example, like you want to build a system with two gig gigabyte RAMs. Uh, uh, for example, 64 core um, is will be much more expensive than building the network system from commodity uh, PC that have like uh, eight gigabyte RAMs, um, eight core or something. Eight of them you put together on the network system. Uh, you can have the same uh, number of processing core and memory, main memory. So we put our um, performance requirement a bit higher uh, to, uh, for the system to process. So we target in 2, 2V in, uh, in big data requirements. So velocity and volume. So velocity, we put, like, okay, let's see if you can achieve 100K or can you do with 500K? Can you do with, from 1K, you can do 10,000K concurrent query. Uh, volume, okay, number of the data in the stream that you can maintain in memory for processing. Okay, 1 million of record, 10 million or more. Big data set like billions is really Usual data set that you see in Big Data Plano for uh, OpenStreetMap around two or three events, and I think other uh, data set is around that number. So we have nothing elasticity requirement that mean the system can uh, can string uh, dynamically when you need more processing up power. Uh, it has to be a hor uh, uh, horizontal scalability. I mean you add more power to the system with the scale. Mm, it had to work with Amazon, Google Cloud, uh, you pay by what you use in the system. So from that, we designed a 
the abstract execution model first. So the input of the execution model would be you have a lot of query you put in the system, like one or 10,000 query, you build a logic query network like this. So you have input, you do, do some like triple matching, you do some join, you do some aggregation, they create we call the logical continuous query network. We put in the system, add the system to scale. So it's a really popular abstract uh, execution architect for a uh, network computer. So you have, or we have a global scheduler, scheduler to call the coordination service that coordinate uh, the parallel processing process from different computers. So big computer, they have local schedule to schedule the processing locally and coordinate with the global co coordinator. So uh, this is the abstract model. There's nothing new in here. Um, but what we do is new is we try to uh, parallel the whole processing network that we post to the system. But right? we see that uh, the whole uh, processing network can divide by <coughs> parallel uh, processing pipeline concurrent, uh, mm, concurrently in different system, different hardware. And other things, most of the data operation that uh, affect uh, considerably the performance of stream processing or data processing is the I/O limitation. So in here, if you have for example, 60 network computer that in you have 60 at least 60 for a uh, 60 hard drive. That means you can uh, parallel the the I/O operation with that to have higher um, throughput of process, look of whatever data operation you do in secondary storage. Because it's it necessary for big data requirement that even you combine all the computer. Uh, uh, all the mm, um, uh, memories uh, together from other computers, you don't have enough memory to fit it all. So you have to fit what you need to process to from from uh, secondary storage to memory to processing and you have to plus the intermediate result back. Uh, another thing is we see the I/O locality is the things you do processing that flows into the data storage to make the processing faster. Then we have kind of different algorithm to enable the I/O locality uh, for that. So, and for that we use one finding that we see from RDF store to make processing more efficient, we encode everything in integer, like RDF node, um, like uh, URI, string, and and other numeric value you can encode in an integer. From that you use a lot you can use a lot of pressing algorithm and can batch the data yeah, to reduce the uh, the overload of, um, of um, transferring data through the network. So this is one of our fighting to make the system. And we also come up with some way to split <coughs> properly the the processing workload to different computer and we group whatever that share the processing effort uh, possible. So we had a publication on ISPC if you want to have a look because we have a lot of technical detail about that. So I don't have time to, to talk about just some some summary about a product that we have. So and the real development on the system we implement in Techbase and Storm. That two D systems they share the the same coordination for service called Zookeeper that to allow you to coordinate the processing. So this thing has a lot of technical components in, inside. I don't know uh, how many of you know Hackbase in here. More Storm. Okay, this is no Storm. So you know this thing Storm is. The, the platform dealing on Zookeeper that help you to do continuous tasks that you post the top and topology of the processing pipeline that will run continuously. And uh, Hackbay is with us 
is the way we parallel the I.O. asset that we can use their API like, okay, we split our data set in different computer. We want to have better throughput of looking of what we need in the disk. They will parallel for us. Of course, we do some efficient coordination through that API. It's not like, okay, we deploy that it will work. And we have the things in the, the big computer. We have like local scheduler with supervisors. In here, actually, it one is uh, the mo modified version of SQL standalone version that we connect the processing, continuous processing tasks inside that. And we do some coordination to the global scheduler in here. We also use some library of pack based in here from Python, Python to, to read and write to the, 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 the pack based uh, data node that's all different chunk of data. So, this one will help us to implement a lot of parallel algorithm for doing incremental computation of the stream. Because in stream processing, uh, incremental evaluation is very important that make you to only compute what is new other than to do recommendation for all this new. Uh, imagine that you have the stream data going to the system for 100 years and you have only like uh, you have 100,000 uh, 100, updates a second and you do the query like give me the, uh, the average temperature in the last week. So you don't have to 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 to, to call the, the the whole bunch of um, one week of data, but you just need what is new to accumulate what you already computed, other than to go through one with the data and to do the, to compute the average, so something like that. So it, some operator easy to to parallels like standard status operator like you do some simple filtering, it's easy to parallel that. Uh, dictionary encoding because I think if someone from the I have saw it, you can see all the data will be encoded integer to do processing and then when you have the you know, the the data in encoded format and integer you want to look up into dictionary to see that in the real format at the end. So but if you run in in into the big system like stream processing like uh, you run for one one week of stream uh, uh, of the stream system, uh, dictionary will get into ten thousand node or even uh, ten million node even, even more. So you have to split it a different chunk to do the lookup in parallel to to guarantee the the high throughput of processing. Other operation we cover different algorithm to do it parallelly. Uh, we also have the technical detail in some, one of our papers. Well, uh, if someone is interested, we can send the paper to you. So, so just to summarize the achievement from that, we do some experiments set up for our the cloud version of SQL engine. So we run on uh, uh, 30, 32 processing node. That means in here you have some coordination node like this and 32 processing nodes. So I suppose it's six or something. And we simulate the, the social network stream as well. So we see how it scale. Uh, so we assume that when we add more processing nodes, and the performance, the throughput of processing will increase. You see this in a log scale, you increase by log scale, you have the performance increase linearly okay, like this. Uh, we test it totally do, we couldn't go more because there's some uh, a bit busy with the uh, budget because we run for like a month or two with a lot of money to go from this period. And you see in here like we totally do not, we reach some limit of the network bandwidth of processing. 4 gigabyte a bit. So we don't know if we increase to 64 or something more, whether we reach to 10 gigabit limit of Amazon Wow. So, but the the one of the good behavior of the system that we see when we increase the node, we will be able to increase the processing throughput. Uh, 
online. Uh, in this test, we only test indiv individual query operation like you do the matching, you do uh, five-way join aggregation, and it will, it will increase. But we want to see the real-life scenario we simulate the data uh, from the scenario that I told you, the, uh, the social network, and we see the similar behavior as well. Even but if, if it's slower on individual one because you need the I/O to decode the data to to post into uh, the client, but it still increase linearly, but it's a bit slower in here. So a lot of things that we have to improve for, for this. Okay, so summary in terms of scalability, we try like, we achieve somehow the electricity for, for this system and it can, uh, can, can uh, achieve the horizontal uh, scalability requirement that we have. And we also can deal with 100,000 per second for the update. And we can deal with 10,000 per uh, running at the same time on 32 uh, medium ECT load. So, assume that you have such an engine. How should we build the application? Uh, how much effort to build? So, uh, we try to make it simple, building very simple interface for people. Like uh, the first step, you have to initialize the engine. Like right? we wrote it in Java, so if you know Java, there's some like setting uh, for the engine, right? Uh, register the query. Assume that you know the Sparkle a bit, and it's easy to load the query language. Write the, the code for connecting in stream to your application logic around five lines of code and then connect the stream into the engine, the all processing will be taken care of by the engine. We hope to make the developer happy because if you are centralized for code, you will have a system that can help you to deal with the performance easier from stream processing. Uh, in two years, we will help a lot of people will use the system, but not quite because people still find hard to, to, to build the system because it's not because of cost stability, but the thing keeping people from using system is uh, they don't know where to start. Because even we published around 100,000 uh, sensor data source for people to use freely, like open data set, but people don't know where to start, what they need, or something like that. When they had the, the the data, they don't know how to write the query, or sometimes the query, uh, writing the query in Sparkle is, is really, I don't know, this error prone task for you to, to write. Most of the, most of the, the bug reports is because people write, uh, forgotten putting some, uh, some uh, comma, some syntax error, it's not about the engine about the engine itself. So we're trying to start some new things in a year ago. If, if we had the data streaming from the system, you have, we try to link data cloud to the system, we try to convert all the same data from the web, signature, uh, uh, other public system. The thing is, we need something here to have people just plug the the system and discovery, uh, to do some discovery of the data to find what they need to fit into the system. We call a server stream collider, is just the idea of a smart server system, but has to be really easy to use. So, we have prototype uh, in 2012, I guess, in ISWC. Uh, we submitted in uh, Triple Five Japan to see what the web channel but we didn't get to the final. But it, it they have very, some cool uh, functionality that you can see on the video on the website. But the most idea is everything you can do with stream uh, link stream data, stream processing, you can do visually through their 
uh, user interface like that. You drop and drop data source, you do some little curve, you find it what you need. Mm -hmm. Browse the data, and you find the data source fit into the engine, build a logic to the workflow, and you click, and you have the data prepared to fit to mobile. We test with some mobile application. It's easy like, to write mobile application on this platform line. Right? You don't have to learn Spark or uh, a SQL, that's the idea. But we are, we just halfway there, or even less than halfway there. But that's uh, some next step I will report to you. So, but during the, the time building that we face a lot of uh, open challenges on the research and, and technical. <coughs> so optimization, clearly, there's a lot of things to do with engine optimization. Because it's the new fuel, it's not only for lean data, but also the database. Another thing is quite simple, is serialization of idea. You see one sensor rating can consume around 500 bytes of data to transfer to the network. That means if you want to transfer around 100,000 triple, you need around 400 megabyte and megabit network to transfer. This is somehow infeasible with current internet traffic at the moment for one system. You see that you have several systems running to a flood. Uh, so I hope in the next few years I see, I see a lot of people trying to do some compression algorithm and some other thing to with RDI based stream. Uh, we have a lot of functionality that we are trying to implement but we don't have resource. Hopefully we will see the people implement that and or collaborate like uh, aggressiveness in the things is sparkle pattern is not enough for processing stream data, like event processing. Uh, the couple with reasoning tasks that like Alessandra uh, is doing that we depend in the system at the moment. Another thing is we need to make use of this because we want to achieve the requirement of the um, big data like we want to store and correlate data in 100 years with the current data. For example, we want to see what is abnormal with the weather inside that way by correlating the data in the last 100 years. We have one data set from NOR, an organization in the US to public all the weather data in the last 100 years. US is around 100 gigabyte uncompressed uh, compressed data. I don't know how much you would consume if you present it out yet. So we have another system to all set at the moment. So we come up with some idea to use the a data warehousing with a stream is one of the trend of data at the moment, but the new thing here we try to use RDF model to use like uh, the cube like uh, vocabulary that Richard is doing. So what is the next step that we are trying to do? So in this year we're trying to support around million sensor days the sort that we have in the catalog. And we will use some, a lot of tools to convert social stream in RDF. Uh, it's come up at the right time in the last two years people do a lot of natural language processing and other things in social stream and they put a lot of open source product for that. We hope to integrate it to the system and use about valuable data sources. We improve the performance by different products like stream warehousing, improve the physical storage and query processing deal with 100 billion triple that we have in our task and more optimization solution clearly. We try to do uh, stream processing on mobile as well and and the master engine that I, I told before. We had the deployment that we're doing in the end of this year. We won one of the projects that people give us our final note for processing and then give us the budget for doing experiment to that as well. They have one real uh, uh, deployment in one city with 20,000 sensors and we will connect into the real setting to see if the system can process that. And now uh, we're trying to host the data Microsoft Azure Cloud or Google Cloud in the near future. 
So in, in summary, we have the middleware, we have machine processing, we have muscle engine, and we have a lot of challenges and plan to do in the coming years. Thanks to the team uh, that, that we have at the moment working on this. So you have any questions?